It's the recession Australia isn't having yet. And the Treasurer is clinging to the hope it won't arrive. Afternoon. Any growth is welcome uh, in these domestic and global circumstances that we confront. Jim Chalmers is no doubt haunted by Labor Treasurer's past. This is a recession that Australia had to have. Unlike the 1990s, record population growth is keeping Australia out of recession. But per person, we've gone backwards for five quarters in a row. When we look at consumer confidence and consumer sentiment measures, uh, people are definitely feeling it out there. The economy barely grew in the March quarter, taking GDP to 1.1% for the year. Household spending provided a lifeline, with Australians not only forking out for essentials, but also splashing some cash on travel to Asia, concerts and sporting events. That meant they saved a smaller portion of their income. Government spending was also up, but investment across the economy was down. We imported more products which weighed on growth, but that was offset by companies stockpiling those goods. It's very clear to Australians more broadly that the economy is barely growing. There are some very concerning elements in this. Small and medium-sized building companies say they're experiencing one of their toughest periods. Major construction projects remain unfinished. A major construction firm has gone into administration. Has gone into administration. One of the biggest drags on the economy has been the construction sector. Investment is down, there's a lack of workers, and higher supply and borrowing costs are weighing on building approvals. The worst quarter we've seen in 10 years was the September quarter last year, and that's going to translate into very tepid level of new housing starts in 2024. The Housing Industry Association is banking on an interest rate cut, and soon. We're really waiting for that breaker of an interest rate cut, which is really going to help bolster activity and productivity in the residential building industry. So too are households, with more consumers now searching for a bargain. In the last six months, even though a few of the shops around here have closed down, we have noticed that our business just increased. So just that one for you today? The volunteers at this op shop have never been busier. We had a young girl come through, she'd moved into state and she wanted to ha furnish a flat. You know, it was going to cost her a few hundred dollars versus thousands of dollars. The Reserve Bank Governor, grilled at Senate estimates moments before the data release, is still hopeful of avoiding a recession. We are in a position where the economy is very weak, as I said. We've got consumption, people cutting back on discretionary expenditure, but we've still got the labour market growing. And that's a very important uh, point. But that didn't stop this sobering warning from Ms Bullock. If it turns out, for example, that inflation starts to go up again or it's much stickier than we think, we're not getting it down, then we won't hesitate to move and raise interest rates again. ANZ senior economist Blair Chapman doesn't expect that will happen, as the bank wants to prevent job losses. The chances of a hike, given they are trying to achieve and maintain the gains as we heard a lot in Senate estimates today uh, that they're unlikely to hike again. The RBA meets again later this month. Most economists believe the March quarter GDP data won't affect the board's current holding pattern with the chances of a rate cut by the end of the year now slightly higher. A rate cut is still a long way off, according to the Chief Economist of the Committee for Economic Development of Australia. I spoke to Cassandra Windsor for analysis of the economy's performance and business conditions. Welcome. Did Taylor Swift save Australia from a contraction? So one of the positives that we saw out of today's GDP figures is that we have had a slight increase in household consumption growth. Some of that is through spending on essentials, so electricity and rent, um, but a lot of it has actually come through spending on entertainment. Um, and certainly some of that is probably driven by Taylor Swift um, and her tour, as well as some of the other entertainment events that happened during the March quarter. What does this story of near zero growth mean for business? We've seen a huge rise in imports, inventories are up and new business investment is off. So business conditions are really soft and I think if you talk to people in the business community that's probably not a surprise. So we're seeing the impacts of a lot of economic uncertainty and of rising interest rates um, on business activity and that's why we're seeing 
this contraction in business activity, particularly around investment. Um, and that has contributed to this very soft GDP figure. So we've just um, inched in with a little bit of growth at 0.1%. Um, and it really shows the fine balance we've got at the moment between the RBA trying to take the heat out of the economy to get inflation down, but not shifting into a recession. And we're actually pretty close on balance. Tax cuts and energy bill relief are coming. How will that influence business conditions for the rest of the year? So look, it really depends on how much of that consumers spend and how much of them save. So we do think in the second half of the year, it will be the first time in a while that consumers have had an increase in their incomes. So if they're out spending, that should give some growth, um, boost to economic growth, some boost to business conditions. Um, and we do expect to see that starting to come through in the next quarter, but probably the, the final um, quarter of the year as well. You mentioned the challenge facing the RBA. Can it land the economy softly? So at the moment, it actually seems like they're getting pretty close to that. So we are seeing inflation. It is still a bit higher than we'd like. So it's about 3.6%. That's above the 2 to 3% range. But it's coming down slowly, but it's coming down. But it's going to be continually challenging for the RBA over coming months and quarters um, because it is that tricky balancing act. And if they go too hard, so if we see another interest um, rate hike, um, if it wasn't necessarily needed, that could really hit on economic growth. What chance do you put a rate hike from the Reserve Bank? Look, I don't expect to see any movement from the RBA this year um, unless we saw a really big change in conditions. I think the most likely outcome next year is that we will see a rate cut at some point, um, but the RBI Governor is not ruling anything in or out. And if we see a material change in the outlook, particularly an increase in inflation, I think they will act and they'll act pretty quickly. Cassandra Windsor, thank you. Thank you.